good evening, LFCN. Um, we are so grateful that you're joining us tonight. And um, we say it often, but it does truly matter that you're with us. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful for um, you taking the time to spend with us this evening. Um, as you know, we've been going through the book, Just Jesus. And uh, again, we'll do that tonight. And um, we're talking tonight about Jesus as the suffering servant. Um, that'll be an interesting topic for us to work through. Right. So um, without further ado, why don't we jump in? Let's jump in. Yeah, I think um, we've been modeling what it might look like to go through uh, this with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at some point, there's a model that we want to invite you to, to practice, not just watch us do it, but go ahead and practice it. Uh, so tonight, we're going to model just engaging with the commentary a bit, and then um, entering some of the discussion questions and see what it might look like to to discuss this topic. It's not it's a heavy topic, and be honest, it's yeah. not a yep. it's not an easy one. But we're still in that season of Lent as a church where we're looking toward resurrection, uh, but the cross is looming before us, and so it's a it's a time uh, to really focus on the cross, and that can be hard. <laughs> the cross is ugly and and uh, grotesque and um and I sad. I think there's something as well to to be okay with the difficulty of it. Mm -hmm. You know, often I know for me, I, I don't want to feel bad emotions. I don't want to feel sorrow. Um, but I think it should be said that it's it's okay to sit in that for mm -hmm. a little bit. That's good. I think you're right. And I'll lighten the mood a little bit and make fun of you for how you said sorrow like a Canadian. That was good. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So All right, let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go into um, John 11. Uh, we're going to see Jesus as the suffering servant. Um, st we'll start in verse 17. Uh, this is the story of Lazarus. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and he's asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. And when the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. We'll stop there. Uh, it's the shortest verse in the Bible, John 11 what is that? 35. Jesus wept. But it says so much. Mm. Jesus wept. Uh, so the picture of Jesus that we're kind of honing in on tonight is the weeping Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Jesus who cries. The Jesus who weeps. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to explore, before we get to the questions, just a little bit why Jesus weeps. Because we have the dialogue, uh, and there's a lot of deep things going on in here because we are... We're seeing death and mm -hmm. suffering and hurt and pain. And um, Jesus is talking about resurrection. He says, like, I, don't you believe that Lazarus will, will rise again? And um, Jesus, I think, knows what he's about to do. And yet when he sees the suffering and the crying and the mourning and the grief, 
right there in front of him, he, he begins to weep. Mm-hmm. And um, so my question is, why, why is he crying? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think Jesus being embodied as human, it shows his 100% humanity. Because mm-hmm. sorrow is um, a deeply human emotion. That's, yep. that's human emotion on display right there. Right. And so I think that shows us that um, Jesus is embodied completely as human in that moment. He's sharing human emotions. Right. right. That he has fully entered as a human mm-hmm. into the human story. Yeah. And um, I think it's easy for us to skip over that <laughs> yeah. as though Jesus hasn't fully become human. Yeah. And uh, so he is fully acquainted with the grief and the sorrow and the suffering of this world. He, he's showing in that moment that he um, has come to understand loss. Right. There, there isn't a human nature in him that understands that something is not right in that moment. I think that's where I want to enter in a little bit before we get to discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, Jesus, uh, he, if anyone knows what the world was supposed to be, (laughs) it's Jesus. Jesus was present, or Christ was present in the beginning when God spoke and said, let there be light, and called it good. Uh, Jesus was there when God formed man into their own image, in the image Mm -hmm. of God, let's create them. He made male and female, and he said, that's good. And uh, Jesus was there when they were given this divine vocation in the world. Jesus was there when worlds were being formed. He knows how good and beautiful and right they could be. And so he knows how far they've fallen. He knows how deep uh, sin and death has cut this beautiful, good world that he created. Mm -hmm. If anyone knows the cut of sorrow, it's Jesus. And in this moment... I think Jesus is weeping for what it could be and, and how death has ravaged his good creation. Yeah. So he's faced with that, that loss of his friends, but there's also that, that grand narrative picture of the world is not right. The world is not right. Right. That's a, is not supposed to be right. We were not humans. were not made to die. Mm -mm. Death is not supposed to be a part of the picture. Right. And here it is. And look at what it does. Look at how it tears people apart and hits them at the deepest place of them. It's hurting my friends. Right. Mine too. Yeah. Where death has cut so deep mm-hmm. and hurt so much. And, um, and you have a question in this story that I think it's worthwhile to explore before we get to these questions. Yeah. Uh, you have both Mary and Martha. Mm-hmm. They come to Jesus and they say, if you had been here. There's my, a conflict there. Oh, my Why goodness. Why weren't you here? Why weren't <laughs> you here? If you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Mm-hmm. And I think when we touch death, like there is a question. There's We start to question either God's um, presence or God's mm. goodness. And... Um, I think that same question when we taste sorrow and suffering is the question, that same question they're wrestling with is the question we often wrestle with. If you had been here, so, so some, you're far away apparently. Yeah. Because I, I experiencing this pain mm-hmm. or do you not care? Like, are you not loving? If you're here and I'm still experiencing this suffering, um, do you not care that I'm hurting? Mm. Yeah. And those two things, if you are if you are loving and you are present and powerful, then why do we have stuff? That's an age old question. <laughs> yeah. We're not gonna answer it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a that's a long yes. question yep. with deep mystery in it. Um, but it is a question that we can acknowledge. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I want to see what Jesus' response to suffering is. Uh, because there must be some other thing, uh, some other um, angle that we're not seeing, that Martha didn't see, that Mary didn't see. Mm. Uh, because the most of, of 
Christian tradition, most people, uh, most people of God, even uh, before Christianity was a thing, uh, most Jews, if so, if you were suffering, there was a problem either between you and God or or God had some explaining to do. Mm. We see this in Job, his friends saying, surely you must have sinned if you're suffering like this. Uh, we see it play out in um, Jesus' disciples when they come across a man that was born blind, and they said, who sinned, this this man or yeah, his parents? Yeah. That he was born, did he sin like in the womb to cause his suffering? Yeah. Like yeah. how something must be wrong in order for suffering to happen. You see, I mean, you see David wrestling with that all throughout the Psalms. Mm-hmm. Where are you, God, in my, my suffering? Right, right. Are you far away? Are you, Why are you so far mm-hmm. from saving me? Like, there must be something wrong uh, that that has pushed you away or made you turn your face away from mm-hmm. my suffering, yep. and which is why I'm suffering. And you have through the Psalms, like, I'm blameless. I, I can't think of anything I've done to push you away. Yeah. Like, we can argue, was David blameless? I, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. there it is in the prayer, like, I'm... I don't know what I could have done to push you away. Um, and you have Job saying, I didn't do anything. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm blameless in this. So I didn't, all, all his answers to his friends, what have you, you must have done something. Yeah. To, well, and, and even later on when Jesus is on the cross, echoing David's words in the Psalms, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right. You know, there's, there's something broken there. Right. Right. Not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be. And yes, we're right to pick up on the fact that something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what we do with that then is mm-hmm. what is, okay, something's wrong. How is God addressing this? What is God doing to fix the wrong that's there? Yeah. Uh, we automatically, I don't think you have to convince anyone that suffering is wrong. <laughs> there's, <laughs> yeah. there's something wrong with it. There's something wrong in the world. Right. Um, so now what's God up to, to heal it or to, mm-hmm. to restore it? And I think usually the story goes like God has to come in power and eradicate it, like get rid of it, like combat the suffering right. and drive it out and make everything right again. Something's wrong. He's got to come and make it right with power and strength. And that was the story that the Israelites thought like, man, there's some big action that God's going to take, some Messiah that's going to come and like make everything right and yeah. drive yeah. all the sadness and all the, the evil and all the bad things away and make everything perfect again. Uh, but then in, in light of this suffering servant conversation, right. we have uh, the voice of, a lot of Isaiah that speaks into what God is doing to address the suffering. Mm-hmm. And in Isaiah, in the 50, 40s through 60s, you have Isaiah's uh, talking about this suffering servant, this mm-hmm. This servant of God who's going to come and deal with suffering by suffering, yeah, by taking it on himself, by entering all the way down and all the way in, literally bearing your wounds Mm -hmm. and your stripes and your pain and putting it on him. Mm -hmm. Like uh, this ugly creature, servant of God that has no... Uh, nothing to attract us to him right. is the way Isaiah describes it. Um, and now people were looking for some suffering servant and they were looking for some Messiah. Mm-hmm. I don't never cross their mind that they would be converge the same thing. Yeah. That the suffering servant would be the Messiah. Mm. And um, this is what Jesus came to do. He weeps because he is the Messiah that enters fully into our suffering and bears it on himself. Because the problem is that the suffering isn't just out there and God has to deal with suffering out there and heal it. The suffering's in me. Mm. And so if he's going to drive it away, he's got to deal with it in me Mm. just as much as he has to deal with it out there. And uh, he can't, if he's going to destroy suffering, it means he's got to destroy me Mm. and he's not willing to do that. And so he had to come up with a different way mm-hmm. to address suffering, and that was to enter all the way in and to let suffering do its worst mm-hmm. to him and weep and cry and take it on and bear it, go all the way down and all the way in and out the other side yeah. of suffering. Yeah. And this story of, a lot of uh, Lazarus 
uh, kind of shows us that yeah. it's a foretaste of that. Yeah. It's like you see death and suffering and Jesus weeping, but then the the grave isn't the final story right. in Lazarus, and it's not the final story in Jesus. Uh, so the way he dealt with it was, it blows my mind yeah. <laughs> how he would deal with the pain and the suffering in the world by taking it on. Mm-hmm. Um, so if, if you have anything to add to that, just as we're talking about the commentary, but if not, we can enter the questions. Yeah, I think we can, we can enter the questions. All right. For sure. All right. Again, this is just to model what it might be like to get together and, and do this together mm-hmm. with somebody. And yeah. we want to invite you to do that. Yeah. The first question I'll ask you, um, can you testify to an instance in which you saw the faithfulness of God's presence in the midst of your suffering? And then the follow-up question is, what did his presence mean to you in that moment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess to answer that question, I, I would say seeing it, maybe not a past tense. Um, for those of you that don't know, I I lost my dad um, to leukemia almost a year ago now. And um, so the the pain of that is, I mean, is, is very fresh. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, to answer that question, I would say I'm seeing God's presence in that. I'm seeing his, I'm seeing Jesus in that. It's not a past tense thing. It's, it's kind of working itself out um, as we speak. And so I think, um, man, nobody wants to feel sorrow. Mm-hmm. Like nobody, I never wanted to lose my dad. That's just not part of life, right? Um, but to know, to reshift my thinking of Jesus entering that with me, um, that changes everything. You know, it, 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 instead of, it's almost like, instead of saying, I lost my dad, I can say we lost dad, mm. you know, and, it, and it's um, seeing Jesus comforting me in the moment, feeling that loss at the same time. So it's, um, it doesn't take the pain away, but it makes it lighter to bear. Um, and uh, on the flip side, if, you know, if, if we're called to be like Jesus, there's a huge comfort. Um, Pastor Stephen often talks about the power of presence. Mm-hmm. And knowing that, first of all, Jesus is with me in that moment, that's deeply comforting. But there's also the, the friends that exhibit Jesus in entering that suffering with me. Um, you know, and, and that's the power of, of when we can show um, Jesus to our friends and neighbors is is being willing to enter that suffering. And it's, it's awkward. I mean, mm-hmm. no, nobody wants to mm-hmm. cry with you. Nobody wants to um, sit with you as you struggle with deep faith things. And, but the people that do are the people that show Jesus. They don't have the answers. There's, I mean, there's no answer. Mm-hmm. There's no answer for um, why did dad die and, you know, all, all those things. But um, when Jesus and when people can enter that with you, um, it, it makes life a little easier to travel, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, to know that Jesus hurts at, at my loss, at our loss, I would say, is um, it's, it's a good thing to know. Right. Sure. I'm curious how you uh, would respond. To, um, there's like a classic theological idea that God is immovable, meaning uh, unmoved by what happens here. Mm. Because if God is moved, then, you know, surely is he not in control or is he not, Mm. um, does he not understand what's happening? So a weeping Jesus uh, is, is not an immovable Jesus. And if Jesus uh, fully represents who God is, is the, is the visible image of the invisible God, what Jesus is like, God is like. Yeah. Um, So a weeping Jesus is a weeping God. Mm -hmm. And, I'm just curious, to some people, a God who's in moved or unmoved is comforting. It's like... Um, the solid rock. Yeah, know? yeah, right. So, a, but a God who cries, um, I'm just curious how that lands with you and your suffering. Does yeah. that, 
what is more helpful, a God who cries or a God who is a rock or some mixture of both? Yeah, yeah. I think in my tradition, I grew up um, maybe understanding God as, um, like you said, immovable and, um, you know, maybe the the former picture. But I think for me, um, and we see this all throughout Jesus' ministry is, you know, whether it be Jesus was moved with compassion. Um, Jesus was moved to sorrow here. You know, he, it shows, uh, to me, it, it shows a, a more human picture of Jesus. Um, and I think for me, that's to understand that is a lot more, um, I guess for me, it, it, it helps to enter a partnership with Jesus to know that he feels the same emotions. He's gone through the same um, temptations. You know, he's, he's actually moved physically one foot in front of the other on this earth. Mm-hmm. Um, that lands to me as, as something where I, I love partnering with Jesus in that way. Um, um, so I think for me, it lands in a very warm spot in my heart, you know, to mm-hmm. know that when I'm crying, Jesus can cry with me. He's familiar with that emotion and he's mm-hmm. familiar with, um, being moved in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it, it shows the clear picture of Jesus humanity. Right. Um, and bridges that gap between, um, you know, a God of creation who's grand and large and over the big picture and yet can enter into this very moment with me. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So a, a suffering God is not threatening to you in, in a way that if God suffers, then is he, is he less powerful or is he yeah. less godlike? No, I think it, it shows that he's more powerful because he's more familiar with what it means to be human. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, I mean, it, it circles all the way back to Genesis. I mean, if we are created in God's image, the very emotions we feel, the very, the very way when you're moved when you see injustice or, or you're moved when you see your, your children are hurt, that same emotion is reflecting God's very created beings. So mm-hmm. it, it, I think to me that that picture of Jesus bridges the gap in a, in a, a more full way. Mm-hmm. That's good. I was just curious. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next question, uh, I guess we already answered this. Um, like, do, do you believe Jesus actually hurts with us? And I guess that's different uh, slightly. Do you believe that Jesus is actually hurt with you in the loss of your dad? Or do you believe um, that Jesus knows what that hurt feels like? Mm. There's a slightly different aspect to that. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think think in... um, Because my dad was just as much a son of God as, as I am. Um, and I think, I think God hurts at that loss. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I think when, I think it's gotta be some kind of mixed feeling of, you know, Jesus is gaining a soul in him Mm -hmm. when, when dad is gone. Um, but I think he also hurts that he is removed from the earth. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and I think there's a death. Uh, death is, is the last enemy <laughs> that Jesus will defeat. So it says he's, he's risen from the dead and death has been defeated, but we live in that in-between time yeah. where death is still very much real and present. We are feeling the, the effects, the effects of it right now. Yeah. Um, and so Jesus, if, ev- eventually will overcome even even death all the way around. There'll be a new creation, right. new heaven, a new earth, and there'll be no more death and no more mourning and no more tears because death will be gone away with. Right. Uh, Jesus will overcome it and defeat it finally and fully. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's our final hope. So I think there's a there's a, a, a aspect of Jesus that would be, boy, death is still... <laughs> it's still here. It still hurts. It still hurts what it's doing to creation. And then there's an aspect of 
he loves you Mm -hmm. and uh, he loves you and the suffering that you feel, the suffering that you've tasted, it hurts him. Mm -hmm. Like I know because he loves you. (laughs) I know with my kids, um, I, I love them dearly and the pain that they feel, it's not just, it's not only, yeah, I know what that feels like. You feel the pain too. Yeah. You're like, that hurts me that you're hurt. Yeah. And I, I hate that you're hurt and I would take, I want to take it away. Mm -hmm. I would, I want to take it away and he will take it away. Um, but first he enters fully into it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's, that can be a source of comfort. Yeah. So how does Jesus entering into suffering help heal the world's suffering? And how does it heal your own suffering when Jesus enters it with you. Uh, so the, the first question, um, how does Jesus entering suffering help heal it, help bring comfort and healing in that, that source of, cuff, of suffering? Yeah. Um, I guess I can, I don't know on the, the first question, but I, I can, when I think about it personally, Yep. I think I, I would start there, maybe the second part of the question, skipping the first part. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn it back on you. Right, right, yeah. Um, I think knowing that Jesus is familiar and knows suffering and knows my suffering, um, to me it, it shows someone who's willing to take it all on. You know, it's it's one thing to say, Maybe to your kids, hey, um, go clean your room, you know, mm-hmm. um, go do this chore, whatever. But there's another thing when you say, hey, son or hey, daughter, let's go clean your room. Let's go together, and I'll show you what it's like to organize and, and put this together and, and, and uh, make this part of your room right. So right. that you can enjoy You've got it. a young toddler. I, yeah. Well, yeah. I can't. I can't tell him to clean anything. Right. Um, but it's to me, it's it's that um, that aspect of of Jesus saying, "Let's do this together." Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not just sending you by yourself. Um, we're going to do this together. And so, when for me, when I see the togetherness of it, it it's it's an inspiration. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and so a couple things, you know, when, when we can embody that for someone else, mm-hmm. say you, you go through suffering and, and I can say, Hey Mike, not necessarily, I know what you're feeling, but I'm going to, I'm going to go through this with you. Mm-hmm. I'll sit there with you. I'll cry there with you if you need it. You know, I'll, I'm not going to offer any advice, but I'll sit there with you and let's do this together. I mean, I think that's where um, the model of Jesus being there with us helps to see how he's overcoming it. It's the togetherness of it yep. for me. Yeah, that's excellent. And I think that's um, that question, okay, what are you doing about it, God, um, is, is kind, of, kind of carries over into this conversation too. Sure, yeah. Because we can easily say, okay, if he's going to eradicate it, death will be dead. Like there'll be no more death. The new kingdom will come. Um, why are you waiting? <laughs> yeah. You know, why, what are you waiting for? Yeah. And that same question is asked all through scripture. <laughs> but yeah. What are you waiting for? Like, and uh, there, I, it's answered in the New Testament where uh, they're saying, you know, God is not slow. And as you can imagine, slowness, he's patient. Um, and if he's delaying, it's because he wants all of creation uh, to receive a chance to to know him before he comes in his fullness, right. and so there's there's an aspect of mystery there that mm-hmm. we kind of put on. God knows when the time is right, but in the meantime, He's willing to come in with us, yeah, and wait with us until that happens. And we're actually told in Revelation that the blood of the martyrs, the people who have who have borne the suffering of the world, are crying out to God like. Is it now? Like yeah, now? Yeah. <laughs> now? When? Yeah. And God is whole wait, just wait. It'll 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 be right. <laughs> yeah. And in the meantime, I'm gonna come be with you in it. Yep. And and walk with you through it. 
I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you alone in the suffering. I'm going to bear it with you. And don't we, we often want Jesus to just take it away. Take away. I don't want to feel this pain. Right. Don't want to feel the loss of my dad. And yet he offers something that's more rich and more full. He offers himself. Right. Right. And, you know, often we want the pain just to go away, but the richness of his presence is offered to us. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's beautiful. It is. It's good. And, he, and um, people who have experienced that wouldn't trade it. Yeah. You know, if you talk to people, the, the nearness that they've experienced with God and the suffering, they probably wouldn't trade that nearness for a lack of suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's a close, there's a nearness that we experience in the midst of suffering that, we only experience in suffering. Yeah. And um, so it's, it's a way that God draws close mm-hmm. and comforts us. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to, we could talk about this for <laughs> yeah, a long, yeah. long time. Absolutely. I just want to mention real quick, uh, he, real quick, the cross, <laughs> like the, the final um, picture of Jesus bearing the suffering of the world, yeah. Yeah. Of, of the cross being the climactic event of the suffering servant. Mm-hmm. And if we picture all, I, th- I heard N.T. Wright talk about this, like all of evil and all of the world, like gathering over Jesus's ministry. Mm. And you see, it's almost like there he is. That's, that's the one. <laughs> and so they, uh, Jesus becomes a magnet for all mm. suffering and evil and hatred. And, and it is unleashed on Jesus mm. on the cross. Yeah. So when Jesus enters the scene uh, in your own suffering, and in that story, in the story of the cross, he takes the full brunt yes. of it. Yep. Uh, when Jesus is with you in the suffering, he's bearing the lion's share of it. Mm. Yes, you feel it, but he's feeling it. Yeah, <laughs> He's feeling it uh, with you. And um, I promise you, he's taking more of the blow than you are mm. in the suffering. And uh, he show he demonstrated that on the cross and said, "I'm going to receive the full attack of suffering on my body, in me, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm going to wear it, and I'm going to bring it into me." Uh, and that, and and then in that final move, and we don't want to get too to the resurrection too quickly, but we don't want to. I don't want to leave you right there yeah, <laughs> like yeah. that. That final move where he takes the full force of suffering on himself and it kills him. Mm-hmm. And then in his resurrection, he provides a way through suffering into the life to come. That's right. And, and he, Lazarus is a picture of that. Yep. Uh, so this is a, this is a portrait of the life I'm inviting you into. That's right. Hope is coming. Hope is coming. Yep. So. Well, good. I appreciate the, uh, the conversation tonight. And again, thank you for um, joining us. We are super grateful that you'd spend time with us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close in prayer. Um, Father, we are so grateful. Jesus, we are so grateful that you enter into uh, pain and suffering with us. You're here with us. and um, I pray that for those that are feeling the weight, um, those that are feeling isolated or just the depth of sorrow, I ask for your um, awareness of your presence for their life. Um, I also pray that you'd help us to be aware of those that are suffering around us um, so that we can enter into that uh, with each other um, and show us how your kingdom comes here on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for this time. Um, We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys.